Brother, real quick, did you see any uh, cell phones or televisions in the mud? I, listen, that's what I'm saying. That's why the, it blows my mind. I'm old school. I'm 45 years old. I was born in 1979. And I've been here through this technological revolution. You see what I'm saying? I've seen, and you probably have too, brother, how I was, you know, grown. A lot of this technology that I saw didn't even exist yet when I, the stuff that I saw in there. Like how small the cell phones that I saw that were there. But back when I, at that time, the cell phones wasn't that small when I passed away. I saw a lot of different remnants, a lot of, listen, you all, it's deep. And then just like that, that darkness was alive, the mud was alive. That was anchoring them in. And it, it, it was like, they, it's like, it was like there's underwater gasping for air, even though it was out of air, but they were like trying to, they were just like trying to reach up for something. And it was millions, millions. And it what? blew my mind away. And that's what I do. That's when I learned about the age of accountability. So what was the youngest that you saw age of accountability, like eight years old? 11. Wow. That I personally know the overwhelming sense. Let me tell you something, you all. One thing I want people to know, okay, if you if, if you look at somebody in hell, you automatically know why they're there. You, it's like you know they hold everything. The same way if they look at you, you would know every detail of their life, everything in one span, because time doesn't exist in eternity. See, we're so used to being temporal beings. We're trapped in the physical, we're trapped in time. Time is nothing but a mechanism to keep the material existence of the universe together, to keep it organized. It's a measurement. But in eternity, time and all of these temp temporal rules and time, it doesn't exist. I'm telling you, you could be there for 30 seconds and it feels like a month. But no, the age of 11 is what I encountered because I was looking I, at just one individual I looked at and he stole cars. He was using drugs. And it was all because of the influence of his father. His father got him drinking since he was five years old. Here, have his beer and making, bringing him in front of his friends. And drink. Like you see everything. You see the whole experience. But what went wrong? What went wrong? It's how many times the father warns us, you all. How many times the father resets us, put us in new situations all over again, saves our lives, tell us, no, don't go there. But yet we go there. But then we end up in jail. I don't know how many times I've been in jail and I woke up and, whoa, father, ah, should have, I should have, I should have. That's what we say. I should have, would have, could have. And that's the biggest thing, people. The regret in hell is beyond hurtful. It is beyond the expansion of your, you can't even fathom. Listen, regret it's so thick there to move. It's like a wave. It's like it's like you can't move in here. It's like an invisible force. The thickness of the regret is so alive. It's like everybody's regret. Every human regret in hell became its own spirit. And it is so beyond gut wrenching. Shoulda, woulda, coulda is not even. You can take the, your most horrible regret here. It's paradise compared to the regret in hell because. He shows you every detail. That's another thing. It's like another, I told people the biggest, the biggest dimension and the people, the biggest space that I saw in here were gossipers. Okay. People, I thought it would be first. I thought it would be the sex. I thought, no, 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 no. It was the biggest, biggest, and it's forever growing too. Hell is always growing. Every time it's growing. Every nanosecond, it's, it's people falling in there. So by the time we finish this, probably pff, good, good million and some. Just in this country, fell into hell. Facts. It's, oh, wow. It just it moves me so much because we don't understand you all. You wouldn't even want your worst enemy to go there. It is so beyond horrible that you can't even fathom nothing. But I, I do want to say this. When I talk about the gossipers and the gossiping and the slandering, people don't know what in the spirit what that does. And a father cannot stand it because it's one of the worst things you can do to anyone is lie on them because you misdirect people and you destroy so many opportunities for that person. You discredit that person. That is a spirit behind that. It is all, it's a spirit. It's so demonic. And we don't know how powerful that is. And you know what hurt my heart? It was mostly Christians from the church that I saw. I don't know if he wanted me to see that, but I'm glad I saw that. It was the biggest people of the so-called church that I saw. And you know, when I instantly knew, I saw as soon as I looked at them, I saw people gossiping in church about people in the church, but then smiling in their face. Oh, hi. But then as soon as they walk up, oh, you heard about what their son is and he's in jail and blah, 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 blah. In church. And one thing I want people to know, once you give your life over to God, once you have a true surrenderance and a baptism, you get a light on your forehead in the spiritual realm. You have a light. And if you have that light and you don't use it correctly and you die, Right? Because people, it's not one saved, always saved. 
that's from the pits of hell. Just because you got baptized and stuff, but you still eating off the fruit of Lucifer and the table of Lucifer, you're going to die. You're going to go to hell. This is not a one. No, it's not a one save, always save. But one thing that sticks with you when you go to hell is that light on your head. But you know what that does? That makes your torture worse. That gives you a signal for the demons to attack you even more because oh, you really got the signature that you only you was a traitor to them because you was eating off their table. So they really going to really kill you and tear you apart. But that light let you know you're a traitor and they oh it makes you, your light backfires on you if you misuse it so remember our lord said that's what he was talking about when he said you better off being cold than lukewarm that's what he meant i'm trying to tell you people because you're going to be tagged in eternity with that light but where you're going with that light makes you opposition beyond opposition and you in enemy's <laughs> dimension with no assistance you cut off from my father so what you think is about to happen for you or to you People, this is so real. So stop. Even, I don't want to hear nobody say, I don't gossip. Even if you listen to it, you're just as culpable. You're still going to get the same accountability. Even if you listen to it, you don't have to say anything. So move around. Don't hang around people that gossip because I'm telling you from my personal experience in hell, that was the biggest congregated section that I've seen, period. There's a section for fake pastors and the demon will torture them with so much exuberance and so much fun. It will blow your mind what they were doing to people. Brother, I also wanted to ask you, when you saw those preachers in hell, did God tell you why they were there? For example, for not preaching yeah, against sin, for not hell. preaching against hell, for not correcting yeah. their members who were in sinful yes. ways? Yeah, I saw the pastor that I saw in hell. They were there for, I, I remember it in detail. They were taking money, okay? They were having sex with their church members. They were watering down the word. A lot of them behind the scenes were practicing voodoo and sensoria, but then claiming Christianity were invading the churches and people's minds, okay? They were also gossipers and slanderers. They also were competitive against other churches to knock other churches down. Yeah, so those are just seven of the, the details of why those preachers and pastors that I saw were getting there, for sure. Those are the seven major reasons why I saw, and I know for a fact, yeah. So. Okay. And so you said they were not preaching against sin. They were not correcting their no. church members who were engaged in willful no. sinning. They didn't say anything. They just kept no. quiet. What they did, they were portals. Those pastors and preachers and beacons, I mean, deacons and bishops were letting the church, the world into the church. They were slowly incorporating because they wanted numbers. A lot of them wanted more fame than to actually have the word to be famous. They wanted to fill in their pews for numbers instead of getting the word out. You know, they, and they, so then they start making, they start compromising our father's word. So then they made a little more elbow room. Okay, it's fine. A little more elbow room for the sake to have numbers or to, for the sake for them to be a famous pastor or a preacher. So then they made more and more leeway for people to sin. So they start condoning sin, which watered down the word. And then boom, there you go. Just like in the lustful part, I was saying before, it's a quick summary. They were raping this young lady, these demons, and some of them 15 feet tall, some of them this big, some of them my height, some of them six feet tall. But they were raping her in every crevice, from every uh, ears, eyes, they were penetrating her nose, mouth, every ripping. Listen, you all, there's nothing that is beyond the scope of what's happening. And you know what's so weird? It's happening right underneath our feet in a different dimension because hell is here on earth, but it's in a different dimension. But it's still below us. It's literally below our feet. People, right now as we're speaking, you all, that dimension and torture is happening. People are getting dropped off. You know how many people died during this conversation? Just like the seconds are going tick, tick, tick. People are dropping without him, without no true relationship. So they automatically qualify themselves for hell and it's breaking our father's heart. You all, listen, we, we really have to stay focused and structured. And, you, you know, I, and what I want to do also, too, if you, if you, of course, if you are having me back as well, because I'm going to let you all know this, how I got out of hell. It wasn't because of anything I did, obviously. I, I'm not even close to being worthy. I'm not even close to being close to being worthy. It's off his grace, you all. It's not about how much you go volunteer, not how much you you you, you, you put in a, little, in a bucket in the church. It's not about how many songs you sing or how many. Oh, those things are great. Those things are side effects, not the first thing. The relationship is the first thing because he threw me and I was on a cliff. There were people to my right, people to my left, all races, all genders. OK, and remember, you all fellowship is taken away. So that's how I know the Lord had to be behind me, because in hell, you can't speak to each other. You have people crammed up, like, for example, the gossipers who were crammed up in that compartment, 
they're so crammed up, but yet they were so so much in their own torment. There is no, hey, how you doing? Let's band together. There's no fellowship because that's been stripped. That comes from God, and God is not there. That that's a no no. So there's no fellowship. But I'm standing on this cliff right to my left of me. There are people lined up. And now when I look up, it just said it was like look, and I looked. It was like a desolate sand in the trees, but the trees looked. Whoa, the trees are creepy. Like, I'm talking about that a whole different, but the sand was like dark and gray. It was like a desolate forest, all of these creepy trees. I look down, it's a path that goes through these trees, and I'm looking down, I see a whole chain gang. And it was like the, the same demon, like reptilian people, they was on the sides of them, like prison guards. But they had a whole line of people chained together. Some of them were just pure skeletons. Some of them looked like zombies. Some had their flesh hanging off. Everybody's naked, and they got their chain. They got... And remember, everybody's naked in hell, too. Ain't no clothes. They got the, the chain. It's a chain gang. And I'm looking. But something said, and it raised me to look even further than the forest. That's when every, listen, you all. When I'm telling you, listen, this place that I saw, it was like a mountainous castle. The color of it, the best way, I mean, because there's no, there's certain colors in eternity that I can't even, there's no contrast to even compare them to. Dark red, maybe black, but this castle looking thing. I instantly knew that was hell. Everything I've been through, all over the compartment, it's like an orientation stage. But I knew, and I looked, and it surrounded us was a gate. These gates are like 100 feet tall, okay? And the gates and the ancientness of the ancient, it was so ancient. This place is so ancient, but it was so horrible. The stuff that I've been through was beyond comprehension. But that place, I knew if I went to that place, beyond See, that's what I'm saying. Maybe I told you all, fear keeps going when you think it's unimaginable beyond that. No, it's another level. I knew that place was way worse than every compartment that I went through. And I knew for a fact that it's hell. It's definitely hell. But that place I was looking at, whole nother, not even close to what I went through. So I'm looking at the gates and I'm looking down. I've seen the people go there. And all of a sudden, I see one. It was like she, she was so ripped up. I mean, I didn't want to describe it as too graphic, but she looked up and she said, she started flipping out like she recognized all of us. And this is the first time I've seen anybody had any communication, any talk for her to recognize. So that's what makes me know that the Lord was there to permit this because once she looked, everybody in that chain gang starts screaming all different languages. And that's another thing. When you're in eternity, you know all languages. There's no such, you can, you can hear a person talk in, in, in any language and you, it's no, there's no, Period. There's no barriers at all. In all forms of language, they telling us, leave, run, don't come, go. Like they were warning us. So it interrupted the, the whole little line. And when I looked up and I really started looking at that place and it really hit me with the gravity of where they were going. Like once you, once you pass them gates, they were going through them gates. That whole line of people. I'm talking about it had to be thousands and thousands in this chain gang. They was leading them to that castle mountain thing. It was so big, it's bigger than the mountain, but it was a castle mountain. That's the best way I can describe it. I felt some, I, I looked up and I said, holy moly. I've never, that's the word, I promise. I said, it just, it was engulfed. Like, I can't even, it's indescribable. The fear, the terror, everything. It's not even, it's, it can't even fit in this dimension. If that fear and terror was to even enter this dimension, it would collapse this dimension. That's how I know how much our father protects us. For real, like, but I felt one touch on my shoulder. It was like one little touch. That one little touch, I have been, that's why I'm chasing. That one touch from our Lord. I didn't see him. I didn't speak to him. He just tapped me in the back of my shoulder. And one, just the tip of his fingertip, the love and the power and the tip of his fingertip is more powerful than this universe. The authority, but the love, but also the ruggedness, but also the cleanness, the it's beyond, he is beyond, I've been chasing it ever since. He touched the tip and all, but it was an aggression. This time I went upward. It was like I was thrown with a force. It was like, it threw me up beyond. And I didn't experience the same darkness that when I came in, it was so fast. But the weirdest thing is when I came up, I was coming down, slamming my body. I got, sl bah! I mean, it was the heart. It, it was so boom, when I hit in my body, Beyond the weirdest thing, it was the most disgusting thing I felt ever. Um, meaning by that was, first of all, I knew I was wearing my body. I knew this is a vehicle. I knew this, this is a temple. 
And it felt like, uh, like I say, the best way to describe it, like I've done before, it's like you put on like blue jean outfits, like jean material, but you wear eight of those and dip them in ice cold water and you put all of them on at the same time. I felt so heavy, so cold. It felt like, uh, like I felt disgusting. And I was laying in a hospital bed and I just felt like I couldn't barely move, but I just felt a disgust. Because I, I, I still had a remnant of that piece of love that came, but then also I was so terrified because I didn't want to close my eyes because I was scared if I closed my eyes, I was going to go right back. But I looked over and then I saw the nurse. And they and with, that's when I started panicking again because it looked like they was wrapping stuff up. It looked like, like they was cleaning up stuff. Like nobody was paying attention to me. Like they was wrapping things up. And I looked and I made eye contact with her and the way she looked at me, she tried to almost fell out the room. She went out screaming and they went and cold green, cold something, everybody come running in and, and I'm just telling her, I'm freaking out because I'm like, don't let me go back. They didn't know what I was talking about. I'm like, no, you know, and then they trying to grab me and pull, no, don't. I just didn't want to go back. I didn't want to go back. And then it took me weeks to get over that feeling of my body. It took me weeks to get over the adjustment of being in my body because it felt like I was wearing something. It's like it felt like I was wearing wet clothes for weeks. Like, people, this life is so temporal. Stop letting the enemy fool you to think this is, stop putting too much energy in this. Start packing your bags for eternity, period. You know, and I, I would love to come back on always, you know what I mean? And, and, and if you have me back, you know, just to, you know, reiterate more things in detail. But if not, y'all can get the book at blessedtobechosen.com. It's called Three Minutes and 47 Seconds in Hell by Dominic Morrow. That fills in so many more intimate details. And also, if you will have me back, I want to explain to people how serious the Marine Kingdom is and uh, what it really is and how much we influenced by it, even our currency. You know, um, even the word currency comes from the word current. You know, but that's a whole nother thing. But I'm just saying, like, you all just stay informed, stay in tune, but most importantly, please keep him in the center of your life. Don't put God first. Putting him first is not good enough. Make him the center of everything you do. I don't care if you're going to the grocery store. Father, come with me. Go to a friend's house. Father, come with me. Everything, be the center of my life. Guide me. Take over my eyes, ears, mouth. Take over my life because my way doesn't work because hell is real. And don't fall for it, you all. So thank you, man. Thank you for having me. And I would love to come back when I have more time. God willing. Amen. Yes. I would love to have him back. Absolutely. So let us know what you think in the comments. And one important announcement. I'm organizing a special one-year fast in which I will be praying and fasting every day during 2024 for all the prayer requests that people send to my ministry. Me and hundreds of other believers are doing this as a step of faith. So for all of you watching, please write down your prayer request in the comments of my videos. And we will pray and fast for them during all of 2024. God has already been answering many requests, and I know He'll keep doing more. I invite you to join this chain by fasting one or two days each week, or one or two days each month, whatever you can manage. More people means more power, and that will get the answers to our prayers much more quickly. Also, please subscribe and choose all so you won't miss any future videos like these videos which have gone viral by the grace of God. First of a sister who saw her friend in hell, the other of a sister who went to hell for 15 days and saw celebrities there. And lastly, I will leave you a link to the playlist that has all the previous testimonies. I'll leave that link in the description, in the comments, and on the screen. If you enjoyed this testimony, also make sure to give it a thumbs up. God bless you, and I'll see you soon. I also want to let the people know, Seven days a week, we have classes. Please go to blessedbechosen.com. If you have any questions for me, we also have two phone numbers. You can call me and I can reach out to you. If you have any questions, any research, any comments, anything, please go to blessedbechosen.com. Also go to Narrow Path Society on Facebook. Join our ministry on there. We're over 4,000 right now. Great community. We love to hear from you. God bless you all. and Thank you so much. Also, Dominic, I forgot, Dominic Morrow, INC on YouTube. Every Saturday, I go live Q&A. And Brother Dominic, could you lead us in a prayer for all the viewers who are going to be watching this video sure. so that God will just minister to them? Dear Heavenly Father, we approach your throne with a sense of gratitude, but also with a sense of urgency. Father, I ask anybody who, you know, just happened to, you know, watch this video according to your will, they get your power, your protection, your discernment, 
but most importantly, the hunger to chase you. So Father, protect their finances, protect their minds, protect their families, their relationships, and everything they want to do so they won't be distracted from you. Clear away in their path for their minds. Give them nothing but emboldenment. And also let them know there's power in challenges. There's power in problems because our Father upgrades us in wisdom in problems. So please give them the fortitude to not take anything as a problem with challenge. Give them the discernment to see when the enemy is trying to feed off them. Please give them the discernment to know that hell is real and is not a joke. And we thank you for all the things in advance. And we love you. We honor you, Father, for your wonderful son, Yahshua, also known as Jesus Christ, by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go. Welcome to the prayer for forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Heavenly Father together. Please continue to meditate on this prayer for yourself. Speak it daily or listen to this video over and over again. And allow the Word of God concerning forgiveness, renewal, and repentance of sins to reach deep into your spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together here online and come into agreement in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Where two or more are gathered, there you shall surely be. And anything we agree upon as touching you will surely do. The Bible says that if there's any unforgiveness, that it should be dealt with before praying. Therefore, we release any anger, bad feelings, resentment, or any other wrong attitude before you now. We lay it at your feet and we release and forgive those who have wronged us. I lift up those watching this video and we come into agreement and lift up forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. Father, your word says that if we ask for mercy and for forgiveness, you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purely on the basis of the promises of forgiveness in your word, with all feeling aside, we believe that the listener is forgiven. Humbly they come before your throne to receive this grace and mercy. Help the listener to forgive themselves and let the past go. We declare in agreement that Jesus is Lord over the listener, and if they believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead, they will be saved with heaven being their eternal home. We receive it and we praise you, Father. Help the listener's unbelief. Their slate is wiped clean right now. In the face of any feeling of guilt and unworthiness, the listener receives their forgiveness from you. The guilt is for leaving and the sin is removed because of your love for them. You have forgiven their sins completely. They are blessed. God in heaven, you have forgiven them because of what Jesus has done. It is not about what they do or don't do. It is by grace through faith that they have forgiveness. They cannot earn it, but you have freely given forgiveness to them because they asked. Praise the Lord. Renew them right now by your spirit in Jesus' name. We speak refreshing over their mind, will, emotions, and body right now in Jesus' name. You, Father, are holding nothing against them. You, Father, are not holding anything back from them. You chose the listener in Christ before the foundation of the world that they should be holy and blameless in your sight. Thanks be to you. In Jesus, they have redemption, deliverance, and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of their offenses, shortcomings, and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of your gracious favor. Father, the listener has received your son, Jesus. They believe in his name. Through Jesus, you have given them the right to become your child. Thank you for forgiving them entirely and absolving them from all guilt. They are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. They are set free from the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Prayer for Salvation. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. By His grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of His Word instantly comes to pass in your spirit, and when you are born again, there is a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. In Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart 
that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.